Today we're on Route 301, just outside of Richmond. Our story spans approximately 89 miles between Hanover, Virginia and Hampton, Virginia. The story of Martha Ann Fields and her incredible journey to freedom. But before we dive into this hidden history, we'll do a little exploring in the town where the Fields family lived. Hanover, Virginia is nestled in on Route 301, just north of Richmond. It's the site of several Civil War battles because of its location between Richmond and Northern Virginia, including the Seven Days Battles of the Peninsula Campaign and the Battle of Cold Harbor. Hanover is a beautiful town with several restaurants and a fantastic museum. Two of the most notable structures in the area are the Hanover County Courthouse and Hanover Tavern. The historic Hanover Courthouse is the third longest continuous use courthouse in the United States. In 1763, Patrick Henry, at the time a Hanover attorney, argued the famous case, Parsons Cause. Directly across the street is Hanover Tavern that also has some amazing history. We caught up with David Deal, who is the executive director of the Hanover Tavern Foundation, who shared some of the rich tavern history. This tavern has been built in segments over time. The oldest part is 1791, around 1820. They built the new section, which was the new tavern. And then around 1830, they tied the two together with a connecting section. So by 1830, the way the tavern looks today is pretty much the way it looked then. Let me show you over here. During the Civil War, the tavern became home for refugees. One such border was Margaret White. She came here with her husband, John, and the neat thing about it is she kept a diary. And so she recorded all kinds of occurrences here at the tavern, as well as you could tell she was well read. She read the newspaper. And so she was reporting in her diary about things that were happening all over during the Civil War. There's so much rich history here in Hanover, Virginia, but this land also holds an amazing piece of hidden history. Just on the other side of the courthouse was Nutshell Farm, owned by Phil and Catherine Winston. The Winston family was huge. They owned several plantations in the area, including Cortland, which was nearby Nutshell. It was also here that Martha Ann Fields was enslaved and forced to be a laborer at Hanover Tavern. She would also, with six of her children and a grandchild, escape almost 89 miles to freedom. Agena Rogers and her son Joseph are descendants of Washington and Martha Ann Fields. Because not too many family photos from this period exist, some images you will see only represent the time. My grandmother had a poster that she shared with us, and in that poster it talked about her grandfather, James Apostle Fields. So once you started digging into James, what new information did you find out? One of the, the biggest things that was a real boon for the family understanding of James Apostle Fields um, also was helping the family understand a lot more of the family as well, including his mother, Martha Ann, his father, Washington Fields, and his brother, George uh, Washington Fields. We are learning these things yeah. from George Washington Fields' memoirs. Martha Ann Fields was born in 1813. She was married to Washington Fields and they had 11 children. Well, she is the property, if you will, of Catherine Robinson. Well, when Catherine marries Philip Henry Winston, Philip then, according to the laws of the time, acquires any property that Catherine has, which includes all the Fields family, according to what George Washington feels, writes, and brings down to us. Phil was one of the most cruel people around as an enslaver. Phil ends up selling Martha Ann's daughter, Louisa, right out in front of the courthouse. That threw her into such despair that she would go out into the woods and she would cry and she would pray that someday her family would be free. In May of 1863, Phil Winston, dies. However, within a couple of weeks, there's a raid by a regiment of Union troops. In July of 1863, a raid at Hanover Courthouse took place as the larger part of the Confederate Army, under the command of General Robert E. Lee, was moving into Gettysburg. Martha Ann saw her chance to flee. That she uh, walks with the children over to Little Pages Bridge, which is probably about four miles from here. But when they get to that bridge, and she has all these children behind her, they get there and they find that the bridge has been burned. 
So they have to go through the, the, the woods. And George remembers being small and all the, the water from the weeds and everything that are, are dropping on him as they're trudging by this time through night, through the darkness. By 3 a.m., Martha Ann Fields had led them to their uncle's hut. Once the bloodhounds were calmed, she had to get her family across the Palm Monkey. And he says that he has a little boat that can take them from one side to get them to King William on the other side. It also has been raining. Mm -hmm. The river is swelling. And the dugout boat that he has can only take him and one child across at a time. And that's what they do. So in George's account, is there any indication of how long it took to make it from Hanover to Fort Monroe? The journey itself, I mean, the, the, the distance, if you look at it uh, right now, it's you know, almost 100 miles. If we're looking at what George wrote himself, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three days, right? Uh, moving from uh, having to navigate everything, going from uh, Nutshell to the river, to doubling back, then going back across, getting across one by one, night after night, um, and then, of course, finally joining up with others. So as George would write, to finally get to Fort Monroe and for him and his family to sleep free under the flag of freedom for the very first time. He never forgot that. I had to see for myself where Martha Ann Fields and her family made that incredible trek to. So I made a trip to Fort Monroe. Martha Ann Fields and her children arrived here at Fort Monroe as freed people. Fort Monroe was the home to almost 10,000 freedom seekers. Eventually, Martha would reunite with several of her family members and secure work here at Fort Monroe. The field story and history does not end at Fort Monroe. In 1890, George Fields would go on to become Cornell's first African-American law school graduate. He became a leading attorney in the region before his death in 1932. James Fields would also become a successful lawyer and was the first black Commonwealth attorney for Warwick County. He represented Elizabeth City and James City in the Virginia House of Delegates from 1889 to 1890. He died in 1903. And even today, the Fields family continue to lead and have been recognized for their contributions to Virginia and humanity. Hanover recently honored the Fields family with a historical marker in front of the courthouse and named a building after Martha Ann Fields. And there are plenty of lessons to be learned from this story. Some of the lessons I get from it myself are lessons of perseverance and resilience. Martha Ann Fields carried us through her time. She had no idea that 150 years later, her great, great, great granddaughter would be standing in the very courthouse where her son would watch the lawyers debate over things such as whether slaves were property. So it's our turn to carry these things forward and get the strength from the stories of those who came before. The Martha Ann Fields story is an amazing account of just one family. Hopefully it encourages you to explore your own hidden history. In the meantime, the next time you're traveling on Route 301 in Hanover County, take some time for a bite to eat at the tavern, visit the museum, then explore the hidden history of Hanover, Virginia.